Good morning. Sorry about the delay. Tried to do it on my computer and all of a sudden, of course, it said there was a problem, but I'm here now. Thank you, Jesus, for my cell phone. <laughs> I'll wait a few minutes to make sure some people jump on here. You can hear the birds chirping this morning um, in my on my back porch. I'm so excited. I love being on my back porch. So, good morning, everybody. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start, and um, I'm going to talk about past is the past this morning. And uh, we're going to start um, with prayer. Well, Father, we just come to you this morning, and I'm just so thankful, Lord, that um, you're so faithful every morning. Your mercies are new every morning, Lord. And um, I'm thankful uh, for the opportunity to share your word this morning. And Father, I ask that um, you would just um, help uh, help me speak your words this morning, and may our hearts be prepared to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> well, um, if you have your Bibles, or you can go back and look at it later, I'm going to um, read from Isaiah 48, verses 16 through 19. And I chose to read um, the message version because it just really brings it home. Um, this is what God says. The God who builds a road right through the ocean, who carves a path through pounding waves, the God who summons horses and chariots and armies. They lie down and then can't get up. They're snuffed out like so many candles. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert, be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through deserts, rivers in the badlands. The New King James Version says in verse 18, do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. See, Israel was caught up in their desperate circumstances uh, when God spoke this to them because they were in captivity and exile here. But God wanted to get their thoughts off their circumstances, what led them to captivity and being exiled shouldn't be their focus. He wanted their eyes set on the new thing that was springing forth, what he was going to do to bring them out of exile. So he starts with, forget about what's happened. Forget about it. Don't keep rehearsing how you ended up in this current predicament. Don't keep rehearsing how I saved the ones in the past from captivity. If you're going to stay stuck in the failure, sin, and discouragement of your past, you'll never go forward to the new thing I have for you. That's what he's telling the Israelites here. And God started in verse 16 reminding them, yes, yes, I have made a road in the Red Sea when the Egyptians were chasing after the Hebrews. Yes, it has happened. And how he swallowed up the Egyptians coming after them. Yes, I have. And yes, I can free you from this exile. But you have to focus forward if you're going to follow my plan. This shows us that there is a sense in which we must remember the past. In terms of what God's done for us. His faithfulness in our lives. How he has delivered us in the past. Set us free in the past. He is faithful to do all those things. We must remember where we've come from and how he got us to where we are today. But in order to move forward, we have to forget and forsake the past that brought defeat and discouragement. Essentially, God's saying, remember who I am, what I've done on your behalf. But remembering or staying in the heartache of that journey that led you there isn't healthy. We must put our focus on what God is doing today. Staying stuck in the past to keep us from the new thing God is doing or wants to do. When we're stuck in the discouragement of the past, the shame and the guilt, we may not even look for the new thing that God is doing. Right? 
I'm not talking about being moved about by every new thing, every new doctrine, new move, just like the wind blows. No, I'm talking about focusing on the here and now, letting go of the past and moving forward to the future. Walking on the path that God has for you. Not what others have for you, not what you want, but the path, the future, the new thing God has for you. We have to fully live in the present in order to walk in our future. Let me say it again. We have to fully live in our present in order to walk into our future. Did you ever play on monkey bars as a kid? Maybe some of you have tried recently. <laughs> I tried to. It took me forever to figure out how to get across the monkey bars. I can never let go and move forward. Then one time we were at a friend's house and I finally got almost all the way across and I fell and sprained my wrist. It made me so mad, but then I got scared and I didn't want to try it anymore because if I let go to move, to move forward, I might fall. C.S. Lewis said, getting over a painful experience is much like crossing monkey bars. You have to let go at some point in order to move forward. We may begin to let go of our past and it may cause us hurt, but God will be there to walk us through, move us forward in order to heal us from the hurt. You see, it's very important to allow God to heal us so that when we think of those painful experiences in our life, we no longer hurt, but are able to say, oh, God has been faithful to me. He has healed me. He has delivered me. He has set me free. That experience has made me who I am today. Some people get stuck in their grief and can't move on after losing a loved one. That's not where God wants us to stay. Some people can't even see living life without them, but God still has a new thing for you. Some people fall, some people sin, they repent and stop the sin, but they get hung up in the shame and guilt of that failure they can't move forward. The shame and guilt cause them to not allow God to heal them and do a new th thing in their life. See, one day Jesus was continuing on his journey. He journeyed a lot uh, with his disciples and followers. And someone stopped and said in Luke 9, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go and say goodbye to those at my house. But Jesus replied to him, no one puts his hand to the plow and looks back and is fit for the kingdom of God. I'm studying and studying about my plowing about how to plow a field back when uh, during Jesus's time I came across this in plowing a field in that field in that day a farmer kept the rows straight by focusing on an object that was in front of them like a tree if the farmer started to plow and kept looking behind them he would never make straight rows and do a good job plowing in plowing in following Jesus we are to follow keep our eyes on him and never take our eyes off of him. No plowman ever plowed a straight furrow looking back over his shoulder. And another man said, plowmen also do something else of great importance. They hold on. A plowman who lets go is no plowman at all. Plowmen are not usually learned persons, taught, educated, nor are they often poets in disguise, but there is one virtue they possessed preeminently, and that is the virtue of holding on, of holding on to the plow. Paul said in Philippians 3, 12 and 14, not that I have already attained it or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I think Paul got it. He had a past that would cause anyone to live in guilt and shame. One I think we would probably look at him today and think, who do you think you are sharing Christ when you have killed Christians? 
right? But instead, God chose him. And Paul chose to take hold of the freedom that God gave him through Christ. He took hold of the plow, forgot the things behind him, and chose to focus on Jesus and what was ahead. Paul's plow made a straight line. He kept focused on what was ahead. Paul found the straight and narrow path. See, Jesus said in Matthew 17, 7, 14, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. He said few would walk the path. Few would find this straight and narrow way that led to life. Letting go of the past isn't always easy. Let's be real. When we're hurt, damaged, broken, shamed, guilty, insert your past here, we just want to forget about it, but not in the way that allows God to heal it. We want to bury it. We don't want anyone else to know. We want to act as if nothing has ever happened. Pride sets in and we just walk forward with a false sense of healing. But if we truly want to be fit for the kingdom of God, we must let, uh, let him set us free from the past so we don't keep looking back. When we keep looking back, it's because we know something is always there. It creeps up all the time when we're not walking in healing. And it's not always easy to allow God to do a new thing in us. It hurts sometimes, just like me trying to move forward and falling and spraining my wrists. He asks us to do difficult things like others, like ask others to forgive us, right? He asks us to forgive ourselves. He asks us to forgive others we don't want to forgive. We, face, we have to face accusers, tell the truth to family and friends, or give up things we love or that bring us comfort. There are certain things in my past that I regret. I truly wish I would have never made some decisions I made. Truly wish I hadn't hurt people that I'd hurt. I truly wish I hadn't sinned. And I've made poor choices that led to sin. But when I think of those things now, I see how God has been faithful to me out of those things. He's been faithful to forgive me, to heal me, to set me free. Have I reached perfection? No. But as Paul said, I forget those things that are behind me, those things in the past, and I sit in my present. I look forward to what's ahead, thank you, Jesus, and a new thing is springing forth. Do you see it? Do you know it? God is saying, will you walk in step with me? Will you allow me to heal your past so the past can stay the past? Will you let God heal you? Will you let God lead you into something new? <laughs> he said, I'll get you out of the wilderness. I'll bring you out of the desert. My favorite passage has gotten me through many times in life, and I want to leave you with it today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Take hold of the plow today and put your eyes on Jesus. He's making you a path and leading you to something new. Do you see it? Amen. Thank you all. I love you and I pray that you have a wonderful day in Jesus. Amen.